Okay, uh, good evening, everyone, and good day. You're welcome to tonight's session, and it's going to be a very wonderful one because uh, apart from what we have to do tonight, which is the doc strings and uh, the function documentation, how we can see how our function is actually doing, the kind of details we can get from our functions. And apart from that, we just I'm going to just make a very brief le uh, lecture. And we have, we have two persons that will be hosting our class today. One of, uh, two of them are, are students and they'll be handling the assignments for the first assignment and the second one. And we'll see the solutions to it. And if you see, once you see the solutions to it, please, if you look at your assignment and you feel that you did not do it correctly, you can actually uh, get it done and resubmit it again. It's very, very important that you do your assignment well. I saw some mistakes in the first one and the second one. That's why we will, we will definitely uh, do all our assignments, the solutions to you, so that you can actually see what you got it, uh, how you got it all wrong, and how you got it right. Uh, if you if you tried a, a different approach and yet you still got to the the, the same answer, it's actually nice. And also your last, the previous, the last assignment I've just I gave. I've only seen four submissions, and I totally understand. It is complex. It's definitely complex, and I'm doing it deliberately because I feel at some point you do not, like, you're not going to be fed all the time. And at that particular thing, all the things I've taught there, all the things that are in that assignment have been, in one way or the other, have been at least told uh, or said in the class. Apart from the one I'm going to say tonight, which is also has to do with the function documentation. So after this class, I will, I will expect everyone to submit the assignment before our next class, which is on Wednesday. And Wednesday, we start our project. Network, network, no, don't do this. Okay, can you hear me, guys? Can you hear me? I think network is having issues with me. It's, it's yeah, really, it's, really it's, frustrating. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, good, good. So, uh, what we are going to do tonight is just going to be just to round up uh, functions, the first part of functions, which we are still going to go further for the next part two of functions. But before then, I told you already of a project is a total project is a particular uh, Python model that is used to uh, create apps. You will see certain things by yourself and you will do it practically. So, yeah, and you cannot understand that particular project if you have not submitted, if you have not completed your assignment. It's very important that you go through it. Please, uh, uh, before I started this course, I told you that Google will be your best friend. No matter how you are professional enough, you have gone to a high level of understanding of coding as far as programming is involved you will definitely check out things on google please do not fail to check it out always try to make it your best friend there is stack overflow there are lots of platforms very, very good python is it is it has a very big community so you can always meet out see someone has the same issue that you have gotten that same thing has been solved years back so always try to navigate the main thing apart from programming programming is mainly pro problem solving and critical thinking. You have to think things through, see things in different ways, think outside the box and all those kind of, try new things, okay? So without wasting much of your time, let me try to get some things done and I will make a, a short revision of what we did in the last class for those that, are, that were not uh, around. So I would like to share my screen soon and I'll be doing that in the next two, three seconds, okay? All right, so I'll go straight to my collab. Is it connected? Yes, I've connected everything. Okay, okay. All right, I'm seeing, I'm already seeing valid syntax here. Don't know what is going on. Okay, so let me just decide to, please mute yourself wherever you are. Mute yourself. Mute yourself wherever you are, please. Thank you. Hey. I'm trying to run a particular code here. I'll tell you what it does if it's okay. Okay. All right. So we can see something. I don't know why it's in this particular format, but 
if you can see something at the right side of my screen. So uh, let me go straight to what we did in the uh, in the former class. Uh, the last class, we looked at the global and the local variable. We looked at the scope. We said that scope is actually any particular thing, any particular line of code that is after the indentation. For example, here in on this particular line, you see uh, a function called scope underscore fn. And once you bring it down, immediately pass the indentation and there is a, uh, you pass the colon here, it gets down and this already, or already is a scope of this particular uh, function. And once we call it out, it gave us what we needed. And we looked at how we can actually create local and uh, global variables. And once we did that, we call, uh, look at what we did here, we defined length is equals to 50, breadth is equals to 30. And when we printed bread, it gave us a test. We would use it in this particular uh, function, define parameter. We said that parameter is area is equal to length times bread, and which will define this outside the particular function. And when we call it out, it worked perfectly for us. And that was known as a global variable. And once we did that, we tried to change the value of the uh, global variable. And when we changed it and we printed it out, it worked for us inside this particular function. But when we now decided to print the breadth of this, it did not work for us. Uh, it still maintained the original value, which was defined already. So how did we do that? How can we change a global very permanently inside a particular function by using the global keyword, which we define here, global breadth. And once we change the, the value for that particular breadth to 89, no matter how you print it, it still becomes 89. And we looked at the cube and we looked at the return, how to return the value of a function. And once we did that, we see what we did on this particular code. And we got it right for us. Number, we defined number is equals to five, a cube underscore uh, of, and we got everything well for us. At some point, before we ended the last class, I said we should, um, we should uh, find a way to call out functions by using the print. So we defined, we printed it out and used this double, we used the parentheses, we called the function then which was cube, which we did define here already. This is the function cube. And we called the, an argument which was defined in the parameter, which is four. And we found that the cube of four is 64. Now, the next thing we are going to look at is the doc string function documentation in Python. What does it, what, what does it mean to have a doc string a doc string, according to what we have done in the previous classes, has to do with uh, we have to do with putting in triple uh, quotes. And uh, once we do that, once we do that, we are going to see uh, a particular uh, kind of expression. The, the inside the text will definitely have an information that we want to pass through to this particular function. That's why we are calling it function documentation. Since we are also creating a particular function, I remember when we tried to do batch functions in our in our assignment. Once we, we checked help of that particular math function, it gave us the details of that particular uh, math function, what it does at some point. Now, if you look at what I want to do right now, I want to get help about function. So I did the cube that we did, remember that we defined a particular, our own personal uh, function, which was cube, which was a function known as cube. So once we call the, the help button here, and see, I decided to use the help uh, inside the cube and once we did that you can see what it have it said help help on function cube is in model main it means that this is the it is the main model this is just trying to tell you that this is the documentation and at this point we don't have a doc string yet because inside this particular function we did not create a doc string i'm going to show you a practical example of a a doc string so what you are seeing now cube um uh, what they call it the cube and a question mark is trying to get a detail of a particular kind of uh, function. If you can see when I did that, it called a signature to be what? To be cube. And the signature, that means how you're calling a particular function. What kind of function is it? This, how is it, uh, uh, what do you call it? How is it uh, designed? How is it called upon? So if you can decide, if you want to call this particular cube function, this is the signature of it. And how, this is how you can actually call this particular function, just like your normal signature, for you to redraw money, for you to get things inside your account, there's a certain uh, signature you have to put on to make that transaction possible. So this is just like for you to create that signature, just for you to bring out the components of that particular function 
there must be a signature. And the signature is to call out the function of that particular uh, uh, function. Okay. All right. So now it's, you can see that the, it's trying to tell it doc string. There is no doc string because you have not done it. And the file, it is in the IPython. Remember, this is called up IPython already. What is the type? It is a function. So you can see this kind of things trying to create the, the documentation of this particular function. So let's go, you can create more details. Sorry, I'm trying to run it again, which I'm not supposed to do that. So I create a new code. If you want to create more detail, you can just say cube, uh, double, uh, you can just use a double question mark. And once you use double question mark and run it, you can still see different kinds of, uh, it will bring out more details. You can see uh, it has brought out more details of this particular uh, cube function. You can see that it has brought out all the details of that particular function. It, he said that you define a cube, and he said that n underscore cube is equals to n power three, and he returned the cube exactly what you did here. Exactly, we can look at what we did here on this particular line. You see what happens here. So that's what this particular uh, double uh, question mark is actually telling you. All right. So we can actually uh, now let's create a particular uh, function that will definitely have a, a, a doc string. And once it has a doc string, we want to use it to perform a mathematical kind of operation. So at this particular mathematical kind of operation, we are going to import the max module. So let's just import the math module as one. Well. So import. So once we import, we are going to import what? Math. And once we do that, we can press the enter and we can now define the function. So let's define the function and let's say we want to get the power. We want to get the power of a particular function, a particular number. So we are going to use we are defining a function in a way that you can actually understand. I'm looking at the time. Once it's nine o'clock, I should hand over to this uh, two uh, students of us to give us the answer to our assignment. So we can define a, a function as we can use. We can decide to use a number. We can just use a n u m, and it's diff a, a power function. A power function in math always takes two parameters: one, the number itself, and the power in which you want to raise it to. So we are going to use another parameter here, comma, you can just use, uh, let's use A. Maybe the number the, the number you can name it as A, definitely is going to come in with a, 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 a colon. And once we do that, now this is where we are going to use the doc string. And doc string, I told you, is going to be triple quote. So we do it one, two, sorry. Okay. Sorry. So it's supposed to be a uh, triple quote here. You can see uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's where we go. So once in the, inside this particular middle of it, you tend to do what? Click, click on enter. And once you click on enter, anything that is inside this particular, uh, under uh, this particular, what they call it, in this particular triple quote is definitely what a, a, a what they call a dog string. So we can decide to decide, we can, I don't know why it behaved that way. Let me go back. It's not supposed to be that way. It's supposed to just go straight to the point. Okay. Then let's just see how this one goes. It's supposed to be very straightforward at some point. I don't know why it's behaving this way. Maybe the collab is, the collab way of it is making, is not making more sense. So let's just see how we can make this work for us. So if it's going to be this like this. So this particular function is going to calculate the power of a number. So we can just put a calculate. It's calculating, calculate the what? The power, sorry, the power of a number, power of a no, of number. So it's getting the power of a number. The next one is going to be, what does it do? It's going to take parameters. So what are the parameters that you have? Parameters that you have. So we are, the parameters that we have here, they, they are what? We have the int. It's going to be an integer kind of number and also an int. And that particular power that is going to is also going to be an integer. And what is it going to return? It's going to, definitely going to return, uh, returns what? It's going to return what? The power of a particular, the power of that number to return what? The give, to give, the give what the give what the power of 
you give the power of words of that particular of the particular words number. Okay. I don't know if you get me up to this point. So I'm trying to define a doc string here so you can actually define, you can actually tell us more details about this particular function. So once we do that, once we do that, we can decide to uh, go back to the main uh, variable. I uh, define our main variable, what we want to use, how we want to calculate the power of this particular a function. So what do we do? We define a, a variable. This is definitely a, a local kind of variable. So and we are going to call out the math function math dot. And how do we how do we get the uh, math dot power function? We do, you know it as POW. For those of you that did your assignments, you did you explore more and you saw that you, you are going to see that it's math dot POR. That is just to show that it's a it's a power function. And we're going to pass in our what our uh, parameters, which is the num, comma, and also the words the a, and which we have. So once we do that, definitely we want to return what. Remember, we have started using the return to return the value. So we just say return. So we return what? We return what are we returning? The variable name which you, you define here, which is what power. So once you do that, definitely. If you call out the, the function and try to find a way of asking for help, so it's going to make things work for you. So let's see, let's run this first. Let's run this first and see. It's working very well for us. There's no error at this point. So we create a new code. Now let's try to bring in the first one we did for cube here, which was to get help. So we can just use help instead of just printing it out. So just use help and let's see. Uh, which is get the name of the function is get underscore power. So, so we get underscore power. If you run this and let's see what it will have, it will give us what will be the information. You can see right now, see what is going telling you help uh, help on function get power get underscore power. the power of number parameters integer number as we did in our doc string so it's trying to tell you that these are the information that we we want to get we can also do the same thing we can also do the same thing we can put in uh what they call it we can decide to we can decide to add more things like the a uh, the what they call it the question mark the the first only one question mark it will still give us the same thing we want to put two question mark it will still give us the same thing so let's just instead of using one question mark let's just get two question marks right to show that there is a doc string let's see if it's true so let's see if it's true so i'll get power control c and i put it here and what do i do control v and double uh a question mark so if you run this and let's see what to give us so guys you can see you can see uh signature it's what, how do we make this signature is get underscore power and it takes two parameters, norm comma a source. It means that the source, this is the source of it. It's trying to tell you everything in this particular uh, function and it tells you all of it. And that is the documentation of that particular function in which you have defined in a doc string here. Unlike the other one we did for cube, we told you, it said no doc string. So these are the things you do to get the what the details of a particular function, the one you are actually building. Okay, now there's what we call there's what we call the built-in model mo method. There are built-in methods and attributes. In Python, objects have built-in methods and attributes. Someone is asking me what is object. Don't worry, there's a particular section in a in a Python program which is known as object-oriented. Programming. God knows if you understand object oriented programming, you are definitely grounded. You are, you are all definitely going places already because that's one of the difficult parts of understanding certain things when it comes to the polymorphism, the encapsulation, the inheritance, and uh, what they call it, uh, uh, what they call it, which is uh, polymorphism, encapsulation, uh, inheritance, and uh, 
is, is, is it a, a calculation and which other one? There's one particular concept too, which we we tend to like get to know. It's actually very complex at some point, but you tend to understand it as we go on. Okay, so in this particular one, there are certain uh, shortcuts in which you want to do. So let's use an example of our get underscore power and let's try to make it work for us. So there's what we call the dog string way of uh, representing our model. So let's say uh, get underscore underscore power. Remember that is the name of our function in which we define. And how do we get the dog strings out? How can we get the built-in methods and attributes by using the word the dot underscore guys please watch out dot underscore underscore want to get the document format of this particular uh, function you can see now it's already showing you a lot of uh, inbuilt models already but in this particular one we need only doc buc and we put underscore underscore so once we do this and we run it if we run it certain certainly something is going to come out so what does it do it's telling you that this is it calculates the power of a number it still returns what that particular doc string on what we see. This is the doc string which we use in that particular function. So uh, for us to make a, a, a better representation of this, we can decide to use the prints, decide to use the prints, put them in a print, and it will, make, it will make a whole lot of sense to us. Since this one is more of a skeleton kind of something, I'm looking at my time, I have six minutes left. So you can see it comes out better in a doc string kind of way, which we define already in the beginning of our, our programming. So the next one we're going to do now, before I even go straight to another one, another kind of uh, attributes and methods we use in the documentation, I'm going to tell you that anywhere you go, they might ask you also in a, it's a very simple question in interviews that most programmers may not, especially those ones that are, are self-taught. It's not double underscore means donda. It's called Donda. I can just say, uh, they can just say what is Donda. I just say double underscore is what Donda. Anything that you see double underscore, something like this, any double underscore is always known as what Donda. Okay. Please take note of that. It's very, very important that you know that. So I can decide to create another code and try to run another model. And I decide to say, let me find out the module. Remember when we did for help and they told us that our model is main. So let's confirm it here. And let's see how it is. So we can say get underscore power, get underscore power, and we call it we call it the dot uh, double underscore, and we say module. All these things inside your assignment. I know you may not really try to get it at some point, but now you have got in this lecture. If I decide to get I run this, if I decide to run this, you can see it is in a particular module known as main. Okay. Now, also, we can also find out the name of this particular model, which already we know the name already, but we just want to make it clear. So we can just say get underscore, still get underscore power. Looking at time, five minutes left. So dot. Guys, okay, before I even say anything, what should we, what will be the underscore here? Guys, let me not talk to myself alone. What do you think will be the answer, what do you think would be the name of that particular, how am I going to represent the name of that particular model? How do you, how, how, how do you, how the, that particular uh, function, how do you think I'm going to represent the name? I've given you the one for module, I've also given you the one for, for, I've given you the one for module, I've, I think I've also given you another one for doc. So how can we find the name of this particular gate underscore power? What are the things? What are we going to put after this dot? Guys, you can just try it out. What do you think is going to be? Can you hear me, guys? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Okay. What do you think we should what do you think we should add there? What do you think we should add there? You can put it in the chat box. I want to find out the name of that particular uh the name of that particular dot uh, underscore name dot underscore name uh, what again i did not hear again no double underscore 
Double underscore, okay. I'm, I'm calling what you're saying, telling me, okay. That's all. No, then another underscore so, ending. Okay. Okay, because, oh, yeah, because it, it, you're trying to remind me. Okay, I should run it first, but it reminded me of one man like that. There was a website of NDA. What is it? NDC. Or is it that's all? Okay, so uh, let me run this out and let's see what it will give us. Definitely got it right. So it just just for us to just run with the documentation of all this. So at this particular point, we have been able to explain the documentation of what your uh, functions, how we can get the documentations of your functions. And how do we get the documentation? Most times it's always to define them in doc string, which doc string means that you have to put in them in triple quotes, like the first quote, the first one, two, three, that's the one for top and create another one, one, two, three. That one is the one for the middle. Then in the middle of it, you decide to press enter. Anything is inside those particular quotes is known as your doc string. So at this particular point, I'll stop for questions regarding this particular class and we'll have the floor to for our two of our students that will be sharing their screens and showing us how they did their first and their second assignment. So if you have any questions, please tell me. Sorry, but it yes. seems I'm the only one. Yes, I have a question. Here. Okay. okay, sir. Concerning this dot string, is it a must <laughs> that we do it? Okay, thank you very much. For you to define for example, we are taking we are taking a standard from what we have in the previous uh, functions that we have. We have other inbuilt functions like the print, the type function. So each of them, once you call out the help function, once you call out the help button and try to find out what this function does, it's a doc string that gives an information on what that particular function is doing. So for you to make sure that you you want to tell someone, okay. This person does not really, maybe did not really get your function where maybe you define your function elsewhere and you want to tell the person what it does. If the person will just say, help the name of your function and it will bring out the details of what your function does. So the doctrine is important for you to get the idea of what your particular function is doing. Remember the function is a particular kind of code, a section of code that performs a specific function. Some people may not know the specific function. They need to see that it is written down. So it is very important that you do. But if you can explain to someone without the person not doing that, there is no problem. So it's very, very important. So any other person? OK. All right. So at this particular uh, stage, I think we are done with functions part one. I'll be sending the lecture note as well. And also your assignment is due before the class of Wednesday because Toto, the first project, you can read on Toto. It will really help you a lot. Just go research on it, Google it, watch videos on it. It will help actually help you a lot in the next the first project in which you want to build. Now I will leave it up to the first person that will be sharing his screen is no other person than David Daly is going to be the one to uh, be the host of this particular session to show us how he did his first assignment and he has the floor now. He automatically becomes the teacher of this particular class. I no longer exist right now. I'll be staying back and I'll be in I'll be watching from another angle and also I may ask questions too. Uh, Mr. Mark, you, yeah, your hand is raised at this particular point. Mark? Yeah, good evening. Yes, good evening, sir. Okay, uh, so, sorry, I just want to ask, uh, the previous lectures, uh, do we have the videos and the link? I mean, for folks oh, like me God to help? Mercy. No, that means, that means you have not subscribed to our YouTube. Please, that even reminds me, okay, before Mr. Debbie starts, Please, I've dropped a link in the paid group. Please go and subscribe. Even though you are not watching the video, just like it, comment. It has been an awesome lecture. Please, let's do that before we start. Please. It's very important. Let's add your... Like, I've subscribed uh, to the... a live lecture. I'm not... I'm, to I'm the not sure you're subscribed because... Check, no, if you check, you see I'm there. But you know, see people like me that are living in the village. The network doesn't really help okay, us watch so, so, so those big videos. 
all our lectures, all our lectures are on, are, are on YouTube. Even though we did not edit it, we just send it live like that. But it's yeah, just okay, for you guys, you. for you to for reference it. So go there, okay. everybody now. You can actually just I dropped it in the group chat before the class. Just go subscribe, say something about Adrian. Please, it's, we need we need you to move on. You are the only ones we have here. So try as much as possible to help us grow the channel. If you have someone that can actually do channel uh, uh, growth, also help us. We want everybody to see what Adrian is actually building. So I think I will just give one minute for everybody to go and like, share, or do anything regarding that particular. Mr. David, don't worry, just hold on, just one minute. It's 9.03. Remember, you have eight minutes apiece, so once you just have the eight minutes, you are the one in charge. So I'm just giving the one minute. Once it's 9.04, you can start. I can mute my mic now. And I'm sorry, Mr. David, you are now in charge of the class. All right. The next person up will be uh, Mr. Gabriel Udo that will be taking part in the second assignment to see to show you how he navigated through. And also, you have you can ask him questions. If he gets hooked up, me, I'll never answer him. I don't even know what he said. You can always search Google. I don't know anything right now. Thank you very much. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, good afternoon, everyone. I will just start by sharing my screen so fast. Um, I guess this is it. So I hope everyone is in my screen. Is my screen being seen by everyone? Please answer me because yes, yes, I can see your screen. Thank you very okay, much. Yeah. So try to go as fast as possible. Uh, this is the questions of the first quiz. So, um, okay, how I did it? So uh, Mr. Debbie, you can increase your font size a little. Thank you. I'll try to look. Uh, hey, please, tool settings. You go to a detail. So is it okay? Should I increase again? Is it okay now? It's better. It's okay it's, yeah, for it's, me. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, okay. Uh, in case I can just zoom out again, if necessary. Yeah, I think like this will be better, much more. So uh, this was a question. The first question was, uh, how many seconds are there in 24 minutes and 36 seconds? So uh, a code was already given. We had to find out, and the answer also was given. So if we don't have this answer at the end, then it's not correct. So it was really that, I would say simple, in a sense that we had already the answers. So uh, in this first one, what I did was just to know, as I know that there are 60 minutes, uh, 60 seconds in a minute. So I had to convert these 24 uh, minutes into seconds and then add to the remaining 36 seconds. So for that sake, I did 20, uh, 24. Instead of this 10, I did times 60 because I know that uh, 60 seconds make one minute. So simple uh, primary mathematics, I had to multiply by 60 and then add to 36 to have the total. And when I run this, if I correct as I did, sorry, I don't, oops. Where is my screen gone? OK, so when I run it, you see this is the answer. So the answer is exactly like this one. So it means it is correct. So going further, question two, the Batmobile having average speed of 80 kilometers uh, per hour will travel from Gotham to Arkham. Uh, we know the distance between Gotham and Akram, uh, which is 450 kilometers. How many minutes will it take for the Batmobile to travel from Gotham to uh, Akram? So what I did here, 
Mm, let me just try to write so that we can go to forward together. So we need to have this answer. So the first thing I tried to do was to understand that we have 80. Sorry, we have it. The, 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 um, the, the mobile is moving at 80 kilometers per hour. This implies that uh, one hour is equals to, uh, sorry, is equals to 80, 80 kilometers. So we are then asked to find, um, we are asked to find how many hours when you say X as will give us will cover in 40 150 kilometers. So but here it is noted that it is how many minutes. This implies that we know that one hour, for example, is 60 minutes. So here we can change it immediately where there is one hour and just place 60 minutes because we know 60 minutes is one hour. So over here we'll say X minutes will be equals to 450 K, uh, kilometers. So uh, here we just do the cross multiplication sign. So 60 times 450. So to find X, let me just write it so that we, sorry. Uh, so therefore X will be equals to 450, something like that. 450 times 60. And everything will be divided by 80. So normally this is how we should do to find our X. So for the code, then our code will simply be um, don't forget to always put print because if you use something else than collab, it will, it will at times it will not give that it will not give you the answer. So here we can go on, and we know that our um, we have seen how the program goes for doing solving mathematics by the pet math. So pet math shows that division comes first. So it is very important when we want to do this. To open our brackets first and then do the 450 uh, times 60 and all that we divide by 80 so that we know exactly that how the you see i've printed it this is what i've printed out and you see the answer is exactly as the answer that was proposed in the question so it's very important to put these parts in brackets so that the uh, the program should not code with its own mind because if it's coding with its own mind for example just taking an example if i remove the brackets here and leave and just put 450 and this divided by 80 you see the answer will be something different oh by the way it's the same why it you write it out because Maybe I'm just having a confusion to be sure that okay. Pet bracket exponential division multiplication. Ah, okay. I understand why the answer is also the same. Because although even if we divide this uh, we always say in mathematics that division and multiplication are commutative. So even if we divide 60 by 80 and then multiply everything by 450, the answer will be the same. But but I think it is very important to put the brackets here. If, for example, we were having something like uh, addition or subtraction in order not to, to be confused with the answer. So I prefer any way to put my bracket here so that the the program can run as I really want it so as not to make any mistakes. So that is for it. And here the next question, question three, uh, what is the 14th power of two? So this simply implies two uh, to the power, two to the power 14. And if I print that, 
uh, you see the answer is this as question three. So here I think there is nothing very important to explain, but we can always put print. It's very important not to forget always to write this print because here in collab is okay, but elsewhere will be it might be very complicated. Question four, we are supposed to print this out. This so uh, we we'll simply write out our print, open our bracket, uh, put our quotation mark. The quotation mark can be two uh, double quotation mark or single quotation mark. On my side, I love uh, single quotation mark because when I press, I don't need to change like to press two keys. Uh, so here, what we write, we write the Python, Python, uh, comma. Capital I, E, love you. And then we put our smiley. And that's all. And we print it out. And you see, it's the same thing as here. So here we go. Okay. Um, also, can you print the type of number 15? So we have number here. When we print out the type, it has to give us the answer class. Uh, integer. So here we've seen it already is print. And when you print, you write in type. And then you open again your bracket and you put what you have to put. In this case, is 15. And after doing that, when I print, you see the answer is class integer. Same thing here. Our answer should show that it is a, a string. So what we do, we do the same thing print. We ask for the type and we write in uh, the expression hi Python. So um, you will see at this level, if we enter it, we have an error. Why do we have an error? We have an error because here we have not put the quotation marks, for example, this and this. So now that we have put the quotation mark, if we go back and run it, you see exactly it's given us class string. So a string is what is written in quotation mark. Don't forget that. So um, same thing over here. Uh, print, we have been asked to come out with the type of the text below, sorry, the type of the text below. You see the text is given in quotation marks. So it's the double quotation marks and we have 15. So as I told you earlier, quotation mark is a string. So this is it. The answer is the same. Going further to here. Okay, what is the remainder when we divide 49 by 5? So to find the remainder, so for Python to print us out the remainder, we simply do, for example, 49. Uh, we use the percentage uh, symbol five, and what it will print us is only the remainder of this division because normally uh, 45, 49 divided by five is uh, seven remainder four, uh, nine remainder four, sorry, because five times nine is 45, seven remainder four. So you see over here we have four. If we had put only 45 uh, divided, sorry, 49 divided by five, you see we'll have gotten 9.8. So to have only the remainder, we use this symbol, which is the symbol of percentage. So that is it. Okay, here also, we are asked to print the floor division of the integer or integer division to result uh, by dividing 49 by 5. So normally, <coughs> if we simple division as I did already, 49 divided by 5, we will have a decimal, which is 9.8. So for us to have uh, instead an integer division that, that is without a point, what we will do, we will put a double slash and 
this is the answer you can see guys and this is the flow division the flow division implies that all numbers that are above uh, that are after the point are not considered so normally there's another assignment where uh, it is not the flow division is another one where we take instead after the point we round up immediately after the point that one i think we shall <laughs> see it in um, assignments uh almost almost ending question uh, nine here we are supposed to find the sum find this the sum of these integers which are from one to five and find the average sum so we know already how to find the average of numbers is one two three four five so we have to divide all this by five the sum of this like this by five so what we will do here we will print and I will open again another bracket because here at the end I will divide everything. Sorry, I will divide everything by the total number for to have the, the average. So here we have our one uh, to the power two plus sorry plus two to the power two plus three. Someone's writing in the group plus three to the power <coughs> plus four to the power two. Sorry, here yeah, was three to the power two and uh, plus uh, five to the power two. And we print it out supposed to give us 11. This is the 11.0 as it was shown here. So the last but not the least, uh, the last but not the least here. So we are supposed to find the value of X. So um, here I will just try to explain us what is supposed to be going on. So if we are supposed to do this to have the value of X at the end, so uh, x will then be equals to uh, something like the square root, the square root of this equation, which is 4 to the power 3. Uh, I'll just put it like we usually put to the power 3 plus 17. So this is what it will be. So how do we do this? this uh, we shall normally at this at this beginning when we're starting we did not know uh, how to input math uh, functions and all this like so we, I will use the principles that we use when we were still in the first class so over here <coughs> what we do print we open our bracket first and then we have four to the power three, uh, uh, to, yes, cube plus, sorry, plus 17. And then all this, we have to put it to the power. We know that square root, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I was supposed to launch it now, but let me continue. So I would just want to explain us that square root Square root is equals to uh, n, which is any number, to the power half. To the power 1 divided by 2 or to the power 0 0.5. You can instead put 1 divided by 2 or 0 0.5. That depends on you. So here it means that we are supposed to put it to the power. Uh, let me put 0 0.5 for example and print it out. We have 9, you see, or we can put uh, to the power 1 divided by 2 and print it out. The answer will still be 9. But if I remove, let us see just what will happen if I remove the brackets 
for the ones Dr. Divided Dr. By... David. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think Our he has practically has... thought from the from the very beginning. All this. All this. Yes, like, yes, yes. Okay. Which is something like 64 plus 17. And <laughs> the answer of this, it will divide, it will put it to the power one, first of all, which will remain the, the answer, and then divide by two. So it is very important here in this case to put wow, again. Wow, wow, wow. Attention with okay. the bracket, how the bracket. Or if you cannot, uh, if you don't want to use the bracket, just use uh, this integer 0 0.5 have the correct answer. Influence, actually, influence. So I am done. As you yeah, can, see. can you hear me? Can you hear me, guys? Something else yeah. to add. Uh, <laughs> our yeah, well done, yeah. well done, well done, well done, Doc, uh, Doctor David. I think you're practically you're Sorry. practically explained That's everything for everybody. This is a nice explanation. Thank you so much, Doctor David. Okay. Thank you so much. I want to put this. I have. Uh, um, Okay. Hello, Dr. David. What yeah. Wrong? Ah, okay. Okay. Hello, Dr. David. You can actually stop oh, your, your screen done. sharing. Yeah, you're oh, done. <laughs> well oh, done. Man. Well done. Nice one. Nice one. I think someone that oh. has never programmed before can That's actually fun. see, make a whole lot of things, get a whole oh. lot of information from this. And nice one. Nice one. Okay. Uh, at this point, I think he has really explained so much, and it, though it took a lot of time, but he has explained so, so much for us to understand. I wish some persons could log into this particular uh, meeting. I believe this message is from me. The one, um, Emmanuel is saying, sorry, but seems I am the only one confused here. No, that was you before you started. And that was mm -hmm. before you started. Uh, Nema, thanks for the explanation. You're welcome. Mark, thanks, Dr. David. You're welcome also. So, I think All I am. Right. Yeah, Don, thank you very much. Thank you so much. I don't know if we can clap for him wherever we are. <laughs> I don't know if it's possible, but, <laughs> but that was that was awesome. awesome. That was really awesome. Yes, clap, use the emoji, use any way you want to clap. This is super amazing. Nice one, Dr. David. Ah, thank you. Well done, well done. Okay, very good. So let's move it up. I think we just have six minutes. Can is it possible, Mr. Gabriel, for six minutes? Ah, okay. <laughs> I hope so. Um, sorry, I hope everyone can hear me because I will just run through. I have like four minutes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Okay. Um, fortunately, I have most of the things I would say in the in comments in the green area. So, um, if you can see my screen from there, uh, the first assignment required that we should just um print hello world, it's a, a string variable. So you certainly just bring in the um, quotation marks and uh, use the print function. And that's what we had in question one there. Um, the second one was we should um, try to eliminate the errors in the apostrophe. Um, I remember uh, a community mentioned that if you start with this, the double, uh, you should end with the double so that anything else inside um, doesn't reflect as a stomp midway, so it doesn't stop the the um, it doesn't come come up as an error. It doesn't look to the system like you're done, and then it starts something else. So that's what we did in question two. Um, question three requested for a one line comment. It was quite straightforward. Now for comments, like you've seen in the first two questions, um, you always start with the hash sign. As soon as you have that, every other thing ahead of it is in green. That means um, this, the the Python is not going to run whatever is on that line, as long as it's uh, it, there's a hash sign, it's like telling Python, just keep, go to the next line. So that's what we have in Please, question. your font size is too small. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, just a moment. I'll try and make it a little larger. There we go. Better now? Yeah, it's okay now. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay, so... um. The fourth question um, what asked us to do a, a multiple line comment. Now there are actually two ways of doing this. Um, okay, well, this is this is just what I did. I think this is the simplest method to go through it. The other one, if you're doing a multi-line, maybe we'll see that in question five. 
um, you just like I mentioned in the the previous question, you always start once you start a line with the hash, it, it skips it. You can keep doing that for as many lines as possible, and you keep having um, that. And then the, the my line four here says, remember that a comment can also begin in the middle of the line, like what you have here in line five. Um, if you if you if you run this, you have welcome to Python class. What we have up to the point where you have the hash sign, and whatever else follows to the end of that line is not going to be run because Python. The moment Python sees that hash sign, it means whatever follows is uh, just a comment and should be ignored. Now, um, the fifth question got a little complicated. Uh, using the forward slash n and forward slash t functionalities for new lines and indentation. Now. Um, I also noted here that the function if is if this function is very is effective as soon as you see once you see that function the very next character takes the instruction from that function and we'll see in the third line um, there were three three um, different lines with two different indentations so the first was who in the world am I after that you had this forward slash n uh, envelope for Pascal. Son extrait casé judiciaire. Il y a l'enveloppe. Sorry, moi. someone's mic is still on, and I'm not sure the person is uh, with us. Okay. So. Ah, okay. Backward slash, not forward slash. There, backward. Ah, backward slash. I'm sorry. I, I usually just mix them up. Okay. So you have the backward slash n for um, a new one. And then backwards like T, um, you know, does the indentation. Now, like I mentioned in, in uh, the second line here, you should note the moment you have that backwards slash T, the very next character here, which is the A, um, takes the instruction to from this, whatever followed, either a backwards slash N or backwards slash C. In this case, it's both. So we require that this should be a new line and there should be a single indentation. And that's what you have here when you run it. You see the second line here is on a new line and has um, an indentation. Then the third one has one line and required two indentations. You also have that here and two indentations. So that's what we had in number. When we, we run that, that's what we had. We had the first line fully run and you notice that we put everything. Um, this is actually what I was trying to say about multi multi lines or multiple lines earlier. Once you have, you can just use the functionality, the um, backward slash n, and it, it kicks. It, even though it's on the same um, instruction, just a single print function can carry that out and um, respond to these functionalities here. Um, the next one, sorry, I used question one because I thought, okay, I'd actually switched to a different set of variables, but this is actually question six. We're required to create a variable named car model and assign the value Volvo to it. So this is the variable car model, and this is the value Volvo. Uh, it's it's a string value, so I mean it was quite straightforward. Um, the next question was still on variables that we should create a variable x and set its value to 50. Now, since it's um, remember the first one was a, a string, so we needed the uh, uh, the what the, the inverted commas up there. Um, this is um, an integer, so it's just um, a usual. It's a direct variable. You don't need to put. If you put any invert, inverted commas up there, open and close, it turns it to a string. And since it's an integer, it's um, it just it's a it's an integer variable, so it's straightforward. The next question um, required that we create two variables x and y, and uh, I think a mistake here. Call them 20. OK, I used 20 and 50. Then create um, then another variable Z, assign X plus Y to it, then you print that. So um, I created X here as 43. I created Y as 20. And then Z was a sum of X and Y. Then we printed Z. So usually or normally it gives you the answer 63. Uh, the next question here um, requested that we remove forbidden characters from this variable's name. Uh, and there were, there were rules that we were told about um, having names of variables. So the first, vari the first I removed was the character 2, because there's a rule that you can't start the name of a variable with numbers. 
And then I also removed this dash sign and I replaced it with the underscore. You can see that here on line four. And then I removed the star sign because special characters are not required there. And then I also removed the beta sign for the same reason. And then um, there was no error. Finally, we're requested to create to assign three variables at the same time to assign a, a single, a particular value to three um, variables at the same time. I don't know, I'm not very good with this uh, words. <laughs> I just know what to press. And then, so you just use the equals to um, for after each of them. So we had X equals to Y equals to Z, and then um, I had the string Python assigned to three of them. Now note, uh, importantly, this is different from assigning three different variables to three different values. I, I think we've mentioned this at some point. In that case, we would have A comma B comma C equals to 10. And what I did here was um, you could use different types of values. It could be a string, oh, sorry, it could be a string, it could be an integer, it could be a, fl um, a float function. As far as there's a comma here, and then you run. So that's the major difference between um, this requirement and this other requirement. I think that's all of it from my end. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, <laughs> Mr. Gabriel. You have done remarkable. I, I think I, I just feel I feel super. I'm, I'm, I, I don't know how to be how to be very proud right now because you guys have done well. You have done so much well. Ah, this is nice. Uh, someone's hand is up. Someone's hand is up. Mr. Tosin, you want to ask them questions, so you can ask them. Maybe they, you are throwing the questions at them. I don't know. Because because I was not the one lecturing. Are you are you asking the question? Thank you. I'm putting the question at Gabriel. Okay. Yes, Gabriel, yes. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, yeah. Um thank you. Very good job. The only the only thing I want to ask is uh, number four, the question four of the first part. Okay. Question four of the first part. That says, this uh, one, can you see my screen? Comments. Yeah. <clears throat> I think multiple line comments. Yes, yeah, I can see your screen exactly. Yeah. Multiple mm. line comments, I think, should be three columns. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Number. So I think that, that's the only thing I need. Mm. Okay, <laughs> yeah, okay. Multiple yeah. lines comments are three. Yeah, yes, that's true. That's nice one, Mr. Tosin. That's okay. true. Just like the dog string, as we just uh, mentioned, then more of like that. But it's okay. It's okay. Okay, thank you. All right. Maybe we could effect the change in the next when you submit it again. All right, guys. At this point, I think we just ate up to we took five minutes of your time. Sorry about that. Is there any other person that wants to add? Any other observation? Okay. Okay. Thank you guys for joining in. And please try as much as possible to submit your assignment. If you have seen, if you have uh, your, your class today, you have seen some changes you want to make in your assignment. Some of you submitted your assignment, you did not finish all the numbers of the assignment. Please, you can always resubmit or ask me to to create another uh, form for you to submit for that. It's very important that you do all the uh, numbers of your assignments. It's very, very important because it is necessary for every step of the way of your programming. We are starting from the little and we are moving gradually and gradually. OK, so thank you, guys. And it was a very nice session. Bye bye for now. OK, let me stop the recording and uh, we'll end the class.